Welcome back to Headbangers Ball, coming to you from the White Zombie Stroke Pantera US Tour in Kalamazoo. And right now, we're kicking it here in the dressing room with Pantera. Well, half the band anyway. And I've got Vinny and Phil joining me here. So, uh, welcome back down to the show, guys. And lovely to see you as well, Phil. Um, and just before we sort of get down to the nitty gritty, um, it's good to be back out on the road. How's the show's been going? It's been going great, man. It's been awesome. It's been a lot of fun. You know, we've played to the largest crowds we've ever played to. You know, we did 16,000 in Detroit the other night, 14,000 in Dallas. It's uh, been real successful and real good. Well, congratulations, because the album went in at number four in the U.S., and I know it's charted all over Europe. So basically, Phil, the whole idea of the, the great southern trend kill, you've basically proved a point anyway now, haven't you? Proved a point? What point is that? The point is that you've gone against all the trendy stuff that's going on and you've come out with a killer record and people are still interested. Not really that we've gone against it. It's just that I think that we've done and stuck to what we've always done since the Cowboys from Hell days when we established what the hell really we were and what our point was. And uh, just, I guess the proof is a strong fan base and we've got a lot of support. Absolutely. And there's a lot of support back for you in Europe as well. I mean, you know, we've had so many letters and, and emails on the internet and whatnot. And I think also because Metallica came out with such a commercial sounding record, you're one of the only bands flying the flag for heavy metal now, really, aren't you? Yeah, in a sad way, it's almost true, you know, but uh, we're happy to do it. You know, we feel like uh, we're the top of the chart when it comes to metal now. Absolutely. And uh, we're proud to go out and do it. And we're looking forward to coming back to Europe and the United States, Japan, Australia everywhere we've been before and you know we want to thank the fans for supporting us and uh... you know enabling us to make the kind of records that we want to make because without the fans you don't have anything sure. well we need pantera at headbangers ball definitely so we're glad to be here so phil um, if i could come to you now about um, the incident that happened i mean that really really must have shaken you up really badly how are you feeling didn't really shake me up i uh, overdosed and killed myself for about four minutes and um, I think it shook everybody else up. I was in bliss, actually. I was gone. Don't remember anything. And um, when you come out of something like that and you wake up and you just, you A, embarrassed. B, you see how it affects everybody around you. Just those two elements right there, no... There's no way that could ever happen again, you know. So through uh, more positive thought and through true inner strength, you know, everybody makes mistakes, but I truly learn from my mistakes, and I have that ability to turn that light switch off. And I'm going to keep that particular light switch off in my life forever. Good. I'm very pleased to hear that. Yeah. And you said in your statement that it made you realize what you really valued in your life. It's Pantera very true, very friends. true. I used to wake up and dread the day, you know? Wake up, every time I go to bed, I'd just be like, ugh, I can't really face tomorrow. And really, it was uh, not me speaking, it was uh, depressants, so to speak. So, uh, you you know, it's basically common sense. It's, it's tough at the time, when you're going through something like that, it's tough to see the big picture, but it's pretty easy. Omit that stuff, live happier, you know, so and it's just all natural to me. In a weird way, too, it, it brought us all a lot closer together. And Very much so. We've taken it not as a negative, but as a positive, you know, it's made us better on stage, it's made us closer as people and as friends, too, you know, so, you know, always, you know, there's bad things in this world, but hey, if you can take them and turn them into something good, so be it. Absolutely. Absolutely. But on that same note, after I'd overdosed, the very next night, we played the next night. There's no rehab, there's no uh, trial period of, of getting the whole band back together. We never lost a step, and uh, I think that took a lot of character from everybody on our crew and our band and stuff, and I think that, you know, they deserve to be uh, commended on that, and I, I thank them. Well, thank you very much for talking so candidly about that. We really appreciate uh, no it. Problem. And we're going to talk to the guys some more, but right now we're going to the first video from the great Southern Trend Kill, and we're going to find what happens when you drag the waters. 
in every Still talking to uh, Vinny and Phil from Pantera and um, just really carrying on actually Phil from what we were saying earlier um, you know we're very honored to have this exclusive interview with you and I know that you've been reluctant to talk to the press um, in, in recent times about the new record. Um, have you been talking to the fans from the stage um, at the shows about what happened? No, actually I haven't because honest to God there's only a certain amount of time that we have to play and we feel like it's more important and I do my own ra I rattle on, don't get me wrong I, I will talk to the audience but uh, we'd rather play the songs you know, you know that's what they paid to see we're going to play the songs and deliver a metal message that you all miss so much. Yeah, let the metal do the talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we were talking a little bit earlier um, about, you know, you haven't had too much uh, TV or radio airplay, uh, particularly in America. Um, do you find that pretty frustrating or does it make your achievements seem even more kind of extraordinary? I think it makes our achievements much more extraordinary because we've never depended on uh, television or radio to bring our music to the fans we always brought it to them you know we past six years we've done more touring than any band and i can think of you know we've never had a break till last year we finally took some time off you know and uh so that's one of the reasons why in 1996 when a lot of other bands are falling by the wayside we're still up there kicking it hard because we don't depend on the other mediums to you know promote our music we do it ourselves absolutely absolutely so phil um does, you know, when you, each album you've done, you've kind of really gone up so many notches each time. Um, how do you think great, the Great Southern Trend Kill follows on from Far Beyond Driven? Because it seems to have gone up like three gears or, on, already. Hmm. I don't really notice the gear change or what <laughs> have you, but uh, to me, I just think Pantera, like I said before in the past, that we know how to write Pantera songs, and I think that's all we really did, is just write the best songs that we know how to write. And... Uh, we're all real, real happy with it, you know, so, you know, okay. so, you know, so forth. <laughs> so if you don't have it, get it, because you need it. <laughs> all righty, well, we're going to check out some Pantera live on stage here at the Wings Stadium in Kalamazoo, wherever the hell this is. And uh, then after that, we're going to talk to uh, Pantera some more. <laughs> with the Headbangers Ball. We're out on the Pantera US tour. We've got an exclusive interview for you. Vinny and Phil still with me. And um, for the Great Southern Trend Kill, um, you recorded the album at home, kind of in your little backyard studio. What difference did that make to actually um, be at home and what sort of vibe did you get going in the studio? Well, I'd say the, the cool thing about it is, especially uh, for Philip, you know, on the last record, we, we all had to go to Nashville and do it. And you know, when you're in a studio singing, the most you can do is an hour and a half, two hours a day at the max, and you're stuck in some town with nothing to do, you know, it's kind of hard on you, you know, and so I know for us down in Texas, it was real easy because we could just go there and work at our own pace, they didn't have a certain time that we had to be in there, there wasn't a certain time we had to be out of there, and the same thing with him working with uh, Terry down in New Orleans doing the vocals, you know, he could come in and do his thing, and then just go about living his life as a person, you know, when you're done, you know, which is sometimes it's really difficult you know if you have to be in a studio or around that environment you can't get away from it all the time you know I sang my vocal tracks at the nine inch